Hi, everybody. It's Mike from Here the Watchman. And man, I am so excited today. Let me tell you, we're going to bring you something to kind of enlighten you and show what is going on, the madness going on out there. Today we have with us my dear brother in Christ, and we call him our London correspondent for the Watchman Report. It's Mr. Mark Sutherland. Mark, thanks for joining us. Absolute pleasure. Lovely to see you, Mike, across the pond. It's good to see you. It's good to see you, brother. And Mark was at the last Hear the Watchman conference in Dallas, Texas. It happened just about a month ago. And uh, we had a wonderful time together. We, we fellowship with, with lots of people. There were other people from the UK there, Katie McLeod, and they've now built a connection. Uh, so it's a wonderful happening. Don't forget, folks, New York. Long Island, New York, August 9th through the 11th. Go to Hear the Watchmen, MEN.com for complete details. Don't miss that conference. Mark, I want to talk to you today about the utter madness that's going on, not only in the world and in the, in the United States, but in the UK. I mean, what's happening? There is blood on the streets of London. I mean, you guys have surpassed uh, New York, New York City and murders and all at the hands of people with knives. And it's just a madness going on. And we look at what's happening over there and we see currently what's happening with the whole issue about Syria. Uh, I mean, it's like what's unfolding in front of us. Is, is it 1984 coming to fruition? It's a very, very good question. Very I, mean, good question. I, mean, I mean, that whole book, I mean, that whole book. When George Orwell wrote, wrote that book, I'm sure that he, he didn't mean it to become a manual. And uh, sadly, it, feel, it feels like that in human terms. It absolutely feels like that. Well, we've got this whole discussion at the moment in regard to freedom of speech. I mean, I can't even believe that we're saying that. If you actually, if, you know, if we're discussing a very sort of famous book in that way in 1984, and it talks about that. It talks about, you know, the thought police thought uh you have a particular thought in regard to conducting certain actions. No, you're right. And I'm very sad to sit here and say that, sadly, we've, we have uh, seen, uh, seen 60, 60 plus people uh, die on the streets of London. I mean, last year it was, uh, I'm, not, you know, I'm not proud of these figures. I think these are horrendous. But we had, I think, something like 75 uh, uh, sort of murders last year. I mean, I'm... I can also speak as someone that, uh, you know, um, has actually a number of years ago tried to launch a knife crime project in the area that I, I actually work in to actually do something practically by using film to lower, to lower the crime rate um, and try and contribute to helping this problem. That's another, that's another story and how people push these, ki you know, these kind of ideas out when you want to do something practically. That's something that very much saddened me at that time. So we're at this. We're at this point. We we also were at a point where we see uh, our police force numbers being being reduced um, under Mr. Cameron's government. There was something put in when David Cameron was there to actually see a decline of police numbers up to forty thousand across our nation. I'm just saying fact this is what is is going on we have a we have a a problem in regard to young people feeling profoundly insecure gang violence we call it within a within a postcode you will have districts we then have a postcode of young people say you know this is our po postcode this is our turf which is a phrase that you would know to say you know no um, we don't want other gang members coming out uh, in regard to our area and it is unacceptable that people feel that and insecure or maybe sad that that they have to address how they feel with violence so we've got that going on you talk about we've had the uh, in salisbury we've had this appalling incident where you know three people have been affected by some kind of poisoning this ex-russian spy his daughter a member of uh, the local police constabulary affected by affected by that and these events have happened and within the framework of all this sort of russia 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 anti-russian feeling there is this huge hype this massive hype you know you 
we were talking we have talked about this you were addressing certain things the other day in regard to social media which i commend you for the fact that we've got all this information coming in we don't know where to turn what's truth you know our, our heads are spinning and since 2015 and i'd even said this publicly where we have been demonizing russia constantly kick them out of the g7 g8 everything and then of course we've had that in regard to your presidential election where it's russia 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 so coming back to salisbury the events of what's happened are appalling but we don't know who fully conducted this even if the, our government says one thing you know it's a proxy by the russian government whatever we really don't we really don't know mike we really don't and we, as I say, we've got so many inputs coming in. And then we've got this whole thing of Syria, you know, where now there is parliamentary, um, you know, Theresa May and the cabinet are meeting together to decide, you know, what action do we take against uh, Syria? Um, we've had this, uh, this whole thing with a chemical attack, sadly, against uh, people within Syria. And it just seems just as Assad seems to be turning the corner and winning the war conventionally, suddenly another event happens to actually say, right, we're now going to tip, tip the whole thing. We're actually, we're going to, the fact that we are upset that a, a pipeline, as Global Research talked about in 2010, is going in, is going in uh, the wrong, uh, maybe the wrong direction that doesn't benefit Europe. That means that we're not going to be um, so dependent maybe on certain gas and oil supplies from various parts of the world involving Qatar and all the rest. I'm just trying to lay out very briefly certain events that have gone on. And I got really, really pulled up this week got really pulled up because like like you and you were part of that as well like you like other dear friends of ours where we are on facebook sharing things emailing going ah oh, look at this look at this look at this and then suddenly it's like what is god saying about all this and all these events and a dear friend of mine who doesn't hold back who just says mark look at it from this point of view i felt really really pulled up and i want to read a verse from but some verses from scripture and i i then want to use an illustration to say that we have to look at the through the prism of god's eyes on all these different things that are going on now some people would turn around and say well that's very very easy you know it's very easy for you to say um are you turning around and saying well it's okay you don't mind if the whole world is going to hell in the handcart because you're going to be raptured out of here and all that we can begin to see and hear that kind of discussion but if we go to and i urge everyone who is then watching this and hear me i say it constantly i am not a great preacher or theologian or expert and if anything else i will say it's a, a um, and i'm very grateful for all the speakers that are here the watchman it wasn't this is not a plug but the fact that when bill salas particularly took up uh, stood up and was unfolding what he he was unfolding and then particularly his book the now prophecies and all the rest so i would point people in in those directions where we're draw being drawn attention to world events and one thing that comes up which is really really powerful so we read i'm going to read this i'll try and do it without my glasses on so isaiah 17 the isaiah 17 the oracle concerning damascus damascus is the capital city of syria this isn't about a geography lesson this is about just a reaffirming when this was written thousands of years ago. Here it is. Here it is. Damascus being mentioned. The oracle concerning Damascus. Behold, Damascus is about to be removed from being a city and will become a fallen ruin. The cities of Urawa are forsaken. 
they will be for flocks to lie down in, and there will be no one to frighten them. The fortified city will disappear from Ephraim and sovereignty from Damascus, and the remnant of Aram, they will be like the glory of the sons of Israel, declares the Lord of hosts. Scripture says, you know, we're not, is this, these events are in God's hands, that, that one day Damascus will be a ruin, a rubble heap. Now, whether that's going to happen now, when will that happen? I don't fully know. But we see certain signs. We're called to be aware of the signs and what's going on. And the Bible is very, very clear. It's like in uh, Genesis 12, where it talks about that how we bless and curse Israel, we will be held to account. And what we need to bear in mind, this is my personal opinion, and that you can send all the exocets at me afterwards to whatever. But this is my, maybe that's the term I shouldn't use. This is the, this is my opinion and my understanding of this. If we take Russian history, if you go back to the pogroms in the late 18, late 1800s, where you were seeing persecution of the Jews, where you were encouraged to burn their houses down and all the rest, God doesn't forget these things when you see other countries around that have persecuted jews that are then persecute you know the attacks upon israel and all the rest god has all those accounts he's keeping record and i'm talking about that also in regard to the uk I mean, next month we are celebrating the 70th anniversary of the state of Israel, a miracle. In one day, I bring this, I bring this country about. Um, Zeb knows more about that than, than we do and, and talk from an authority on that issue. But this is, this, is a, this is a fact, 1948, the miracle of 1967 in regard to Jerusalem, the capital being handed back. All of these things have to be held in context, Mike, in regard to how, sadly, Iran, Iraq, other countries, and again, I say, including the UK, our, how we would be held account in regard to how we have blessed Israel or blessed, blessed the Jews. And, and sadly, we do not have a brilliant uh, record of that, say, in 1948. We do not have a brilliant record of that at all and, and actually going back on the Balfour Agreement, etc. So I just want to encourage that. And I just want to give, if I can, this is going to be live here, is to try and give a practical example. So I have two sibs here. Right. So what we do, what we have to do is, is the information is coming in. The information we are taking in to this sieve, right? We then have to let that information sift out through scripture. And then underneath, we then are placing our other sieve, which I just about doing there, which is then sifting. What is God saying about this? What is the word on that? Excuse me. Uh, of what God, <laughs> embarrassing, of what God is actually saying. And that I'm just trying to illustrate that. And I do apologize. I'm going to turn this off. Uh, this is live. Um, the actual to actually sieve and see what God is actually saying. And what I have what I have got caught on I mean, is so easy. You know, we've had all the the uh, Zuckerberg in Washington, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. We're seeing the, you know, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, every everyone else, Google, social media coming at us. Um, doesn't want our voice out there. What is it saying? Um, we can get so wrapped up in that. But what is God saying? What is he saying? Because in regard to Twitter, social media, etc., you know, Revelations talks about the acceleration. Daniel talks about that acceleration of technology. You know, so that is happening prophetically. So not that i've been meaning to preach mike i do apologize on one level but the fact is if we are not paying attention to what this book says and what is our faith about and that's one of the biggest lessons 
I have learned this week because I could spend 24 hours a day watching, you know, whoever speaking at Washington. I could watch all that. But what is God saying about world events? And those world events are in his hands. And you and I, I'm talking to myself here as much as anyone else. Whoever's watching this, we have a responsibility to point the way to Jesus. There is no other answer. And when people are going to be astounded that all of this is laid out in Scripture, we are not discussing replacement theology at all, even though vast majority and quite bits of the church uh, are into that. There is a place for Israel. Totally. To, you know, so we my that's what I want to say is that is our role right now is to point people to say, we see what's going on, but what is God saying about this? Things are ordained. Things are ordained in Scripture. Mark, how, how well said. I mean, it's and a beautiful illustration with the sieves, as you call them, <laughs> as we call them, strainers. You know, <laughs> just a, a great illustration, and, and I think you're, you're dead on. You know, the answer is in the Bible and the answer is turning to Jesus. And, you know, we all worry about all this other stuff out there. And I'm not saying that there's not some worry and stuff that's going on that we shouldn't worry about. But, uh, you know, we know where the real answer is. Now, what I'm curious, and I know our listeners will be curious to know, what is the church in England saying about all of this? What are the people on the streets of, of London and, the, and, and in the UK overall where are they chiming in on all of this and, and what appears to be, and I, I, I don't mean to be a fear monger, folks. That's, those of you who know me, I'm the last person on the earth that buys into that, but seems to be pushing us to the cusp of World War III. And, and it's a very fair point that you make. So what is the mood? You could say... Um, in a in a recent in a poll that has been given that the last thing that this country want to be wants to be involved with is a war with syria doesn't want to be involved with a war with syria at all doesn't want sorry with with russia via syria etc and that is born out of the fact that you know we've gone into iraq and uh, what what did that do okay with great respect we've seen the turmoil in in the middle east um, from from that, they're not discussing. Um, you know, we then discuss the sort of the last uh, the last eight, eight years in regard to the Arab Spring and all the rest. That's another that's another subject for another day. But the immediate response is no, we don't want to get involved in involved in this. Suddenly, I think, um, and. We're, we all suffer from this, uh, jaded when, and there is no excuse for it. When we see pictures coming out of Syria, all this kind of stuff, it's very often that people just carry on with their lives and forget it. And then suddenly there's a big pull up, which is what's happened, which is, are you telling me that we could see a nuclear exchange from rockets from, you know, one, one side, one side of the world to the other? Is that what you're you're telling me that could actually be happening um so that from the mood from that point of view is i would say is definitely there another another mood in regard to what church leaders are saying if i'm honest with you i i uh, i haven't heard anyone say anything about that at the moment and maybe i need to pay uh, more attention but again it will be it will be through a filter through the strainer of whatever sort of uh, political rhetoric that people would would want to uh, come out with, you know, a bit like, look, Trump's tweets are about to start off third world, you know, the third world war and all this kind of thing. Um, so, Mike, if, I don't know if that that answers it, but there is a there is a, a concern. Of course, there is a concern. I think the other thing is, is that people have moved to a point where maybe they don't actually believe their government. They don't actually believe what their government is actually saying, you know, in regard to there is a discussion of saying, well, we don't necessarily think that uh, maybe Mr. Assad did this. Right. There is a discussion like that. 
um, because it's born out of what has happened before. And you are absolutely right. There will be no doubt about it that the fear level amongst uh, certain people, there is a fear level. And this goes back to the fact that somehow we have to get out there and, and say, well, from our faith point of view, this is what scripture says. This is who, who is, uh, who is in charge. Um, I'm, I'm quite, I'm quite astounded in, in some ways that, you know, our prime minister, Boris Johnson going, well, we've now proven it was Russians in, you know, various, uh, chemical attack of what happened in Salisbury without really maybe looking at the evidence. And as I say, it comes back to it's not proven. But that cynicism, that lack of trust is is definitely out there in the British public. Yeah, it's 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 definitely out there here in America, too, Mark. I mean, we, you know, you I mean, in these days, you have to question everything. I mean, yes. you really do, you, mm. because it's hard to decipher what's true. It, I mean, you can think that like, OK, if I if I read it on Drudge, it's true. If I read mm. it over here, it's true. If I see it on MSN, it's fake. We don't know. I mean, you, but so you have to analyze each and every bit of information you get thoroughly uh, before you you really formulate your opinion. But I guess I'm curious <clears throat> if you know the answer to this question, the church in England as a whole. Are they taking a stand on any of this publicly? Are they saying anything? Um, sadly, embarrassingly, I can say I don't, I don't know the answer to that at the moment. I'm sure that at some point maybe the, uh, the Archbishop of Canterbury may come out and, uh, and say something. Um, I, don't, I don't know. Um, but I know that I'm sure that people will be praying about this. Those people that are awake and paying attention to what scripture what scripture says they are they are praying about they are praying about this that's all i can say they're friends of mine um but publicly the problem is is if you take someone like you know the say the archbishop of canterbury for argument's sake as head of the church of england in this country who has been so pro we must stay within the eu and all this kind of thing then all the rhetoric will be will go through that kind of prism sadly maybe not going through a prophetic prison or even actually dare i say it preach the gospel sorry but that this has to be you know this has to be this has to be said um and then people to go well what do you know you're not uh, you're not in any authority whatsoever when well, we have they have the authority that jesus has actually given us which is in uh, which is in the bible um my sorry in some ways to give you an unhelpful answer that um i can't speak out i can't say that on the one hand but on the other hand politically whether um sort of a kind of collusion over the last uh, couple of years where politically people go along with things like the white helmets and all the rest and people can do their research into this and other other things where well, this is this is what we're going to accuse um, Syria of doing, or the Russians are doing, and that and that may not be that may not be true. But at the same time, I come back to it: biblical prophecy is is playing the crucial role. This is in God's hands. Is are we going to go down that road now? I don't know. I don't know. But that is in His hands, and I don't say that likely at all, Mike. I do not say that lightly. No, that's well said. And, and, you know, sometimes the silence from the church is the biggest answer they can give. Uh, but, you know, Mark, why don't we do something biblical uh, to wrap up today? Why don't you lead us in prayer for the people of Israel and the state of Israel? Lead us in prayer. Mm, definitely. Definitely. Well, let's just pray, pray about this whole thing. Father, we just thank you for the privilege of just being able to pray together. And, and just be to be able to pray for with everyone that is uh, going to listen to this broadcast. And I just pray you just lead this now. Father, we just bring these events to you. 
they are in your hands they are totally and utterly in your hands we know what psalm 83 says we are fully aware of what ezekiel 37 38 and 39 say we're aware of what book of daniel says and what the book of revelation says but father you have given us the to go out there and tell people about jesus this is the whole thing and we just bring the nation of Israel to you. We thank you that we're celebrating the 70th anniversary of the state of Israel and the miracle that that came about. Father, we, I am saddened and um, of how, uh, and ask your forgiveness on behalf of our nation in the fact that we have not um, repented of how we view Israel. We have done so much in the past to uh, not help the foundation of that state and to go back on, on the promises that we have made. And I just ask your forgiveness for that on behalf of our nation. And Father, we just ask that you will, um, as it says in your word, you know, you will protect that nation. Father, I just pray that, um, that when you really reveal, you really reveal yourself to them and that there will be, you know many people that have just come to know you within that nation now so we just commit all this to you and father we ask that uh, as you are in charge of world events that people will look to you because the whole of world history revolves around that nation which is the size of of wales so we just commit all of this to you um and I just pray that uh, people will really, really engage in prayer about world events and what's going on. But Father, we look to you and we trust you in the whole of these, these situations politically and help us as Christians to sift through the information and to hear your voice. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Mark. What a wonderful way to end the show for today. Uh, again, I want to thank you for taking time out of your day. It's evening there in uh, London right now. We appreciate you coming on, talking to us about what's going on over there, really what's going on over there, not what we read over here. Uh, so just thank you and bless you for all you do. Pleasure, Mike. Great to see you. All right, folks, that's going to wrap up this edition of the Watchman's Report. Remember, as always, there's nothing that you can't do without Jesus in your heart, except nothing at all. Get up, get busy, get activated in your faith, go out there today and make a difference in this world in the name of Jesus. God bless each and every one of you. We'll see you next time here on The Watchman's Report. <coughs> Excuse me.